welcome to Live to Learn USA, and today we're going to discuss exactly when you can retire. Thinking about retirement is incredibly important because it gives you a milestone and a target to shoot for to help you stay motivated while you're spending all of your, your life working hard, saving, and investing, and trying to make the best decisions for yourself. So I'm going to talk you through exactly a concrete strategy today on how you can actually set this target and really get motivated to keep grinding. So the things on the agenda today is I'm going to go over the two phases of your life. And this concept is going to help you tactically think about your life in a more strategic way. And then we're going to go over the 200 rule, which is really going to set that target that you need to get to. And then we're gonna talk about how do we actually get to that target? What Do we have any different options? So we're gonna jump into that. So the first concept is the two phases of life. This is incredibly important to understand. So if you look at a graph of your life, I love thinking in terms of graphs because it just makes it common sense for me. And if you look at your net worth over time, in this new structure and new methodology that you're gonna have, there's two phases of your life. You have the growth phase and the sustain phase. And what do I mean by that? In the growth phase of your life, right? This is your, your younger years, this is today, right? So you need to grow your net worth as quickly as possible. Again, until you reach this threshold of the point of sustainment. And sustainment essentially you reach that threshold when you've acquired enough wealth to actually sustain your lifestyle. And you could still put yourself in a position where you continually grow that wealth, even though you're living off of it, it doesn't need to go down. So it puts you in a stress-free environment. And this is the happy place, right? This is what you're working for because you get to spend your life the way you want to, focusing on the things you're passionate about, your family, your friends, whatever hobbies you're into. So you should be extremely motivated. And one of the cool things is just thinking about this, again, conceptually, there's a certain mindset you need to have in this growth phase. I would say in this growth phase, you need to understand that your dollars today are so valuable. So pushing them into investments, into real estate, business investments, stocks, um, different ETFs, index funds, it's so valuable. So every dollar that you spend here and things you don't need, a too fancy of a car, maybe a, a splurge on, on an apartment or a house that you really didn't need, that's going to push this date out even further. So it's really important to set that expectation for yourself. Secondly, in this growth phase, which I find really interesting in a, in a tangible way to think about this, is you want to pay as little tax as possible during this phase. And what do I mean by that? I mean, during this growth phase of your life, until you're able to retire, you need to not think about dividend stocks. You need to not think about Roth 401k or Roth IRA, because all of these um, types of investments and places you're putting your money, in, you're gonna have to pay tax. Versus if you put those that money into growth investments, like growth stocks that don't pay a dividend, but they have a high upside potential. You're not gonna have to pay a dime of tax and you can let that investment build because if you're paying taxes your whole way out, that's gonna take you farther. It's gonna push you further out into that transition to the sustain phase. So minimize your tax liability at all costs Use your traditional 401k, traditional IRA, growth investments, growth stocks, and stay away from anything that's going to be seen as ordinary income on, on your tax. Again, real estate is a great way to avoid taxes because there's so many deductions where it actually goes, it lowers your taxable income. So I'll leave a, a video link right here, and that's going to provide you good insights on all the tax breaks that um, real estate offers and, and the wealth it can build. So that is step number one. So step number two is the rule of 200. 
This is a great rule of thumb to help you identify when we talked about that graph, right? The growth transition from growth to sustain, how do you get there? So to calculate what that point is from a net worth perspective, using the rule of 200 is very simple. All it means is that you take 200 times the monthly income that you would need. So your, your monthly income. And this is a fairly easy number to calculate because you know what kind of lifestyle you want to live, right? Do you want to be more lavish or do you want to move into off the grid, you know, in a place where you don't have to pay a ton of taxes, but you can get the, the place that you're happy to live and maybe a more modest lifestyle. So it's completely up to you. But for this example, we're going to say that you want to live on 200,000 a year because in your particular scenario, let's say you have kids and that's what you felt comfortable would be able to sustain your family over time. So once you have that identified, you have to transition that to a monthly. And what that is going to be, that's going to be about $16,700 per month. Okay. So now what you need to do is multiply that by 200. And that is going to be $3.4 million. So that is the, the number that you need from that net worth perspective to transition, assuming you need 200K a year into the sustain phase. So now that we have that target identified, now we're going to talk tactically about how you can invest and actually hit that in the quickest way possible. And we will close out with looking at how can we reach that 3.4 million, right? That is what it's going to take for our last example of reaching the getting off the merry-go-round, the hamster wheel, jumping off, whatever way you want to think about it, so you can enjoy your retirement, right? So, the first things first, 3.4 million can seem very intimidating. And let's just look at what that takes and why that number is there. So if you look at 3.4 million, and in this example, that's assuming that it's all in stocks, right? So if you have 3.4 million, and let's say you had all of that invested in the S&P 500, which averaged around 10% return a year over the last 140 years. And a lot of people always say, I always read on the internet, people saying how you can't get any 10% returns on index funds. It's literally as simple as S&P 500, look up VU, look up what it's done over the last 100 years, and it's gotten that. But it doesn't get any airtime for whatever reason. So let's say you got 10% return. That means you had a net net worth increase of 200 k that year. In the example we just showed, this person is living off 200000 a year. That means that they, after taking their living expenses, they're still plus... 140k a year in their net worth increasing over time. So again, they're sustaining their wealth, right? So that's in a very important piece to understand. So one of the things that when I first look at this is investing 3.4 million takes forever, right? Because if you're just going to take your day job, unless you're making a ton of money, investing that is going to take 20 or 30 years compounding to get to, to that point but there's ways that you can accelerate this. So let's go back to the fundamental root here. Our root, if you remember from before, was to get 16.7K per month. It doesn't all have to be stocks, right? And if you look at the quickest way, you can reduce this by having passive income or cash flowing investments. So let's say you had an Amazon business, right? Let's say you made $3,000 a month on your product of net profit. Okay, in that Amazon business. That means that you no longer need $16,700 per month from stocks. That means on an equivalent basis, you only need $13,700. Right? $13,700 per month which is great because you can hit this a lot quicker from an investment standpoint, multiply it by 200, it's a smaller number. And what is that 
be equivalent of. So $3,000 per month is the equivalent of multiplied by 200. That is $600,000. So all the key nut here is that every $3,000 of passive income that you generate, you need $600,000 or less invested to withdraw off of because this is sustainable stream of income, real estate, blogging, YouTube, whatever it ends up being, that that's a very powerful way to drive this number down significantly because you're diversifying. And the beautiful thing here is it's going to take you maybe six months, which I've done myself in probably six to 12 months, I've been able to generate roughly this. And you know how long it would take me to get to 600,000 investing? A heck of a lot longer. So that's the, the key thing is that you're gonna chop, you're gonna drive the time and pull it forward the more passive income you reach because that helps you reach your monthly goal sooner by reducing that need and you're gonna to need to invest less because investing, let's be honest, it takes time. It takes put letting your money compound slowly year over year. And there's better ways and quicker ways to accelerate this depending on how motivated you are to A, reduce your expenses, B, increase your income, and C, saving that in proper vessels to actually compound and make this hockey stick as much as possible. So. Hopefully that made sense, and that's a really critical piece I want you to I want you to leave with is that every three thousand dollars per month removes six hundred thousand dollars off of the amount of stocks that you need invested, and all I used there was a rule of two hundred, which we covered in the second step. So this is a very tangible means to strategically position yourself to be able to take advantage and have a great game plan together where you can feel confident and comfortable about what your target is and how you're going to go about doing that. What does your income profile look like to reach the ultimate stage of your life when you can sustain and build wealth and spend enormous amounts of time with your family, your friends, and get the most precious asset? Because yes, your money and your net worth is increasing, but in reality, your time is the most precious asset that you have and you're maximizing that in the meantime by accelerating your wealth building during your growth phase. So thanks for listening to Live to Learn. Hopefully you got lots of value and are excited about your path forward and are very tactical about approaching this. So stay tuned. If you like this content, I appreciate a thumbs up to help share this video with others. And consider subscribing if you love content on personal development, personal finance, wealth building, anything along those lines. And if you have any questions or comments or video ideas, feel free to drop them below in the comments. Thanks for listening. Take care.